Hi guys, Dr. Robert Stevens here for the Men's Health Clinic based in Poole, Dorset. Today we're going to be talking about the male menopause or the andropause as it's commonly referred to within the media. Just doing a quick Google search, uh, first page, the Daily Mail, grumpy, tired and no longer interested in you. Your husband may have hit the menopause and here's how to fix it if he has. The Daily Telegraph, watching the male menopause in action isn't pretty, but since I'm going to endure it on my own in a few years, I'll be gentle, says Rowan Pelling. Menopause myth, the sun this time. How common is the male menopause? Can you be treated for the menopause on the NHS? And what are its symptoms? All you need to know. Now, rather disappointingly, there is a NHS UK reference to the male menopause. Now, it's a rather unhelpful term. The female menopause is the cessation of menstruation. Essentially, the ovaries have run out of eggs, so the female is no longer fertile. This brings about a secondary change in oestrogen, and hence all the issues that females have from a lack of estrogen. It's a defined point in time when the ovaries run out of eggs. Now to compare it with testosterone deficiency syndrome or primary or secondary hypogonadism is incorrect. It's really a very unhelpful. Now we are trying to gain legitimacy to what is a legitimate medical condition. So, what can we do? Well, we need to stop using stupid terms like the menopause, male menopause, and andropause because that's not what it is. The male menopause is therefore not real. Testosterone deficiency syndrome is. Now, at the age of about 30, our testosterone declines by about 1-2% to each year. Why is that? Now, we all know that we are at, feel our best when our testosterones are at our highest. If you can remember that far back, I'm sure, I'm sure you remember feeling a lot better than you probably do now in your 40s and 50s. The reality is, men were at our healthiest in our 20s. Why is that? Now the whole point of having a normal testosterone is improved health. So what's supposed to happen? Well, you're supposed to grow up, go through puberty, and you're supposed to father a child, and then you're supposed to stay healthy long enough for that child to grow up and father or bear a child themselves. You're not supposed to go on forever. That's the, that's the reality. You are not supposed to go on forever. Does that mean you should accept having a low testosterone? Of course not. We interfere with the natural course of things all the time in modern medicine. We interfere with the natural course of things all the time with the artificial rubbish we put in our bodies, the artificial environment that we live in. You only have to move to the country from the city and you will understand that it's healthier for you to live in the country. This artificial world that we've created isn't good for our health. So, what do you do about it? Well, it's all lifestyle, exercise, nutrition. But some guys, unfortunately, despite having addressed their lifestyle, exercise and nutrition, still have symptoms. Now, obviously, clinics like mine, the Men's Health Clinic, we are here to help. And we do that, obviously, by offering advice and offering testosterone replacement therapy if it's needed. So, testosterone deficiency syndrome 
is a legitimate medical condition. Men have been suffering for years. Essentially, you know, we always put up and shut up. You know, we don't have a voice and it's time that men had a voice. Primary hypogonadism. That is when you have a primary problem with the testicles. Secondary is when you have a primary problem with the brain, which sends signals down to the testicles to produce testosterone. Often it's a mixed picture. Now why is it often a mixed picture? It's because obviously it's multifactorial. Sometimes we can't pin a cause to your symptoms. So what do we do? We do a testosterone test. Now, the quantitative level of testosterone gives us an idea of where you are in comparison to the normal population. However, unfortunately, it is rather unhelpful. The reference ranges in the UK did not take age into consideration. However, we know age is, an, is a, a factor in lowering testosterone. So it doesn't make sense that we use the same reference range for a 20 year old that we do for a 65 year old. However, we do, in the NHS at least. If you go to see your doctor and you're 20 and you have a testosterone of 12, you will be told that, that is normal. Now, ir irrespective of your symptoms, you will be told that is normal. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to realise that a testosterone of 12 when you're 20 is not normal. However, that's the state of the NHS. It did not take age into consideration when defining a reference range, which it obviously should have done. Now, you can also rationalise that when you're 65, do you want a testosterone of 12? Well, you could argue yes, because, you know, it is natural ageing. So we know that testosterone drops with age. But should you accept that? Well, no, you shouldn't. You know, there, there's a, lowering testosterone has a negative impact on your health. Some recent evidence suggests that you want a testosterone of over 18. I'll put a link to the paper uh, in the comments section on the website, or on YouTube, sorry. But we all base our decisions on numbers. Now, it isn't as simple as that. You know, we don't know what your normal testosterone is. The one thing I would like to take away from this is whilst quantitative measures are helpful, they're not the be all and end all. Essentially, you should be looking at your symptoms and your quantitative levels. So, young guys who are watching this, young, fit, healthy guys who don't think this is relevant to them, please get your levels checked because it will provide a good reference for when or if you have symptoms and signs of low testosterone. So we can titrate your testosterone numbers up to around that level it'll be quite helpful so what do you do lead a healthy lifestyle make sure your nutrition is in check make sure you exercise regularly I'll also post a link to my top 10 commandments which is relevant for both testosterone replacement therapy people and also fit guys who want to maintain a healthy testosterone for as long as possible. So, the male menopause, is it real? No. Is menopause real? No. Is testosterone deficiency real and hypogonadism? Yes. Stop using those other terms because it's not helpful. We need to have legitimacy to this condition so that it gets taken seriously and guys get the help that they need. Alright, take care.